The slice is one of the most versatile and important skills any tennis player needs to develop. From drop shots and angles, to lobs, approach shots, defense or offense, there's a slice to fit any one of those scenarios. In today's video, we're going to be going over the technique as well as how those shots fit into the tactics of the game. Welcome to today's Tennis 101, where we're going to be going over the slice. Now, before we get into the video, I've done this before, but I wanna just make sure I briefly cover it in about 10 seconds. The same way that in other videos, I've talked about the fact that there are three different types of topspin motions, which are flat, rally, and heavy. The slice has those same variations where you have a flat slice, a rally slice, and a heavy slice. Those are decided by the amount of spin versus power that we use. So on this little chart that you see me pushing up here, your slice, your rally, and your heavy shot are all based on the balance between power and spin, flat having more power and heavy having more spin. That being said, now we'll go into the technical aspects of both. So starting with the technical aspect, when we talk about hitting a heavy slice versus a flat slice or a rally slice, that's gonna be completely determined by how much of the front edge we lead with. The flatter we wanna hit the ball, the more we're gonna lead with the strings, the heavier we wanna hit the ball, the more we're gonna lead with the edge. Now that doesn't control the shape the ball is gonna take, that's only gonna control how much spin versus force we get. To use a different example, if you guys remember when I taught you guys how to hit forehand specifically, we talked about having different linear approaches on the ball to decide what the ball was gonna do. So if I wanted to hit a flat forehand, I would take a very linear line straight at the ball. That would mean the ball is gonna stay low and go straight. If I wanted to hit heavy, I would come from the bottom and come to that same contact and extend up the ball would leave at a more vertical trajectory. The problem with slicing is we have to account for not just the approach angle of the racket, but also the approach angle of the line. So we're not always gonna look flat when we strike a slice, whereas we wanna look as flat as possible, as consistently as possible when we're striking top spin, rally, or flat forehand or backhands. So now that I've kind of explained that, when we go into the different types of shots that we use, we're gonna take that same concept of what we did at the bottom and flip it to the top. We have a flat swing path, we have a 45 degree swing path, and we have a very linear swing path coming more downward on the ball, but what's going to determine where the ball goes is going to be a combination of how we approach it and what type of shot we want to hit. For example, if I want to hit a heavy slice, all I'm thinking about is leading with this edge. But if I go at this angle here, I'm going to hit a high heavy slice because when I get to the ball, my racket face is very open. I'm going to get a lot of spin, but not a lot of force. If I was to take that same angle here and raise it up into that 45 degree zone and approach the ball the same way, I'm going to still hit a heavy slice because I am still approaching with primarily the racket edge, but the launch angle is going to change from my racket looking like this at contact to my racket looking like this. So the launch angle is actually gonna bring the ball down a little bit, even though I am still hitting a technically heavy slice. And then if I wanted to hit even more downward, I would bring my racket up into, if we're shifting it, we go one, two, three. I'd bring my racket up into a very vertical approach angle and come straight down on that ball. And if you look closely, now my racket face is almost completely straight at contact. And the thing is, we want to make sure that we're accounting for both pieces of information when we decide how we want that ball to leave. So again, high slices that are heavy are gonna be approached like this. Mid-range heavy slices are gonna be approached like this. And then low slices are gonna be approached from the top coming down. Now that I've broken that one down, let's flip to the rallying slice. The rallying slice is going to be 45 degrees, basically in between the heavy one and the flat one. Now, when I approach the ball with a rally swing, I still have the same three lines from the middle, the top, and the bottom. But what's gonna happen is if you notice, I'm just gonna compare it to my heavy swing. My heavy approach angle was this, but my heavy contact looked like that. Now, if I go with the rally option, when I get to the ball, my racket pace is already kind of closed off a little more than when I went with the heavy option. That means my linear line is actually gonna bring the ball down more than when I went with the heavy shot. Likewise, if I go a little bit higher and lead with that 45, now I'm kind of in that flat territory. And here's the thing I need to really highlight for people. If you go with the third option, you go really high up on the approach. When you come down 
and that rally slice is what you're hitting, look at the angle of my racket base. Now I'm actually closed and facing the floor. Now, comically, I'm showing you guys what happens when you do that. But the thing is, some people don't understand that approach angle has to be compensated for with what we do with our racket face at contact. Now, if we go with the flat option, the flat option, we still have those same three lines, but if we go with flat, when I go from here straight to the ball, my racket face is only barely open. This is automatically gonna be a very low and driven slice. This is something that a lot of people want to see a little more often because they feel like they're being more offensive. But if I go up into that 45 degree territory, we'll notice I'm already facing the floor with that contact. Because remember, what decides if it's heavy, rally, or flat is how much of the racket face we're leading with. So if I'm leading on that first line, the racket face needs to stay straight. I can't caress and finesse around the ball when I get there. I've got to approach the ball true to that angle. When I come down, I'm already facing the floor, and this one is even worse. Now, that doesn't mean there aren't scenarios where these shots fit but you have to understand the difference in the scenario. So there are three specific changes that we have to make when our racket face starts to close off a little more than we want to. Adjustment number one is gonna be taking the ball earlier when it's on the rise. What that does is that accounts for the racket face closing a little bit because the ball's actually bouncing at a more upward angle. You're gonna to wanna to do that when we look at the highest rally shot, for example. That ball's coming up, you set your racket really high and you approach downward on it, but because the ball's kind of bouncing up at the same time, they cancel each other out and the ball stays fairly low. Now, when we look at hitting flat ones, we're actually going to need to take the ball on the rise for one of the options, which would be that 45 degree one. But what we're also going to need to do, if we want to go with that 90 degree approach angle, we're going to need to take a ball that's floating and significantly closer in the court because at that point, the net's not an obstacle. So as you see, there are specific scenarios where all of these shots fit, but you just have to know which one of these slices you're going to be using when you want to actually apply tactics to the game. The high heavy slice, we're gonna be looking at that when we go with a drop shot. Now, obviously I'm really ripping into these examples when you see me swinging fast, but if I was to soften that swing path up a little bit, I'd still have a heavy ball, I'd still have the ball clearing the net, but that ball wouldn't have a lot of force to propel it into the court, thus I'm hitting a solid drop shot. Now the low heavy slice, we might look at using that for approach shots because that buys us time to get to the net and forces our opponent to have to lift the ball up. The flat slice that we keep really low, we're gonna use that more to deflect pace sometimes. Somebody hits the ball hard at us and we just kind of meet the ball, make contact with it and deflect their pace back at them and we keep that ball low, neutralizing a lot of their force. There are tons of different ways to use these things, but the technical aspect of it means that we understand which slice technique fits into the scenario. Thinking that you just have a backhand or forehand slice is part of the problem that comes when people actually learn how to slice. They don't look at the variations in it. Sure, they'll learn how to hit a drop shot here and there, but there's so much variation in the technique. Technically, there are nine different ways to hit slices because we have three different contacts and we have three different swing paths. That means you have nine different ways to approach the game depending on when you choose a slice. And everything I'm talking about on the backhand applies to the forehand side as well. So being that we understand how the technique fits into the framework of the game, it becomes significantly easier to use the right slice at the right time rather than just hitting slices and hoping for a desired outcome. When we hit low versus high, there are different ways to make the ball go high. We can hit a low slice that's flat, or we can hit a heavy slice that's also low. And when we know which one fits the situation, it becomes significantly easier to play the game tactically. But that's gonna wrap up today's video, guys. If you know anybody who would benefit from learning how to slice properly, please send this video off to them. This is one of my favorite variations and ways to teach where I actually show you guys formulas or frameworks to learn these skills rather than just teaching you general technique. There's a bunch of different ways that slices fit into the game. And if you know which slice you are better suited for or which slice is better suited to the situation, you'll stop giving up unforced errors just by not really registering where your situation leaves you in the game. As I said, if you know anybody better from this, send it off to them. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.